Core strength is key to power, leverage, and preventing injuries. The faster you run backwards, sideways, uphill, and downhill, the more plyometrics you do, and throwing in multi-directions equals the faster you will run, jump, and throw. The harder you work in quality movements, the better you will perform. You must be willing to put in the volume work or you'll never reach your potential. During his career, Tom did over 2 million medicine ball throws, nearly a million sledgehammer hits, and 100,000 hose drags. How many are you willing to do? What we have put together in this video and training program is our personal experiences in training to be world-class athletes. Our training program is based on what we started with the Elite Athlete Project in 1977. Nearly 30 years later, we've decided that it's time to put everyone on the same page and share our knowledge and successes with coaches and athletes. With our vast experience, we've collectively learned many different aspects of training. Here are a few key points to consider. There are no shortcuts. Quality training is better than overtraining. Weak side training is essential. Kiss or keep it simple stupid. Motion memory stroke training. Mental training. And maximum effort is 85% of one repetition maximum. However, a certain level of cardiovascular fitness is required to perform the volume of training required for throwers training. By building up the volume of training we recommend in this training video, you'll naturally increase your cardiovascular capacity. All successful throwers are you can't get this whip from just doing one-arm throws. Do these from three to nine-step roll.
The technique used in the one-step drop is to step with the plant foot first to eliminate wasted movement. The quarterback will position that plant foot like he always does, perpendicular to his target. When throwing to the left side, the quarterback simply has to back out to position his foot perpendicular to his target. The technique used in the three-step drop is to take one big step to gain separation from the offensive line, then to take two small steps to position the feet to throw. These small steps are called the gather. The three-step drop uses a rhythm gather, meaning that the ball will be thrown when the last step of the drop is planted. In this type of drop, the quarterback must be balanced. His weight should be centered and his shoulders should be level so that on the plant, he has forward momentum for the throw. When throwing to the left side, the quarterback wants to remain on the midline with his third step. This is so we don't give defensive rushers a shorter edge. In these clips, you can obviously see the quarterback is cheating to the throw, which puts him closer to the edge rushers. The technique used in the five-step rhythm drop is similar to the three-step drop, except that the quarterback takes two extra steps. The beginning and end of the drop is the same. At the end of the drop, the quarterback should be at six yards. Balance is even more imperative on this drop as the routes that correspond with this drop are deeper. When throwing to the left side, just like in the three-step drop, the quarterback should remain on the midline so as not to give edge rushers an advantage. On the five-step hitch drop, the quarterback will use a hitch gather. In the hitch gather, the quarterback will take a big fifth step, then hitch forward and throw. The quarterback should end up at seven yards deep. The forward momentum of the hitch gives the quarterback added power and times up with routes that are run deeper. The belly drill is used to teach ball security to the quarterback. The quarterback will simulate a snap and pull the midpoint of the ball to his belly button. The belly turn drill should follow the belly drill in sequence. The turn is specific to the dropback actions. When the quarterback turns, he should bring the ball to the seated position on the left chest and his front shoulder should be under his chin. The first step drill for dropback actions is designed to teach quarterbacks to keep their body and feet positioned to maximize depth and blindside vision. In this drill, the quarterback repeatedly performs the first step. In that step, the quarterback wants to create separation from the center by pushing off while remaining on the midline. His feet want to end up in the T position with his right foot parallel to the line of scrimmage. For the drill, we drag the left foot to emphasize the position of the toe facing forward and enabling the quarterback to see his blind side. The long drop drill is designed to maximize reps on the crossover and drive steps of the drop back actions. During the drill, the quarterback should maintain the T position with his feet, enabling him to see his blind side. The other points of emphasis during this drill are to maintain balance by keeping the shoulders level and keeping the steps smooth and controlled. The quarterback wants to gain ground but without taking steps that are too big. By keeping the steps under control, the quarterback is able to keep his eyes level, maximizing his visual acuity. The scope is a simple device used to reinforce the position of the front foot and shoulder. The quarterback is given instant feedback on those positions by using the scope. Also, this drill is effective for quarterbacks who have a tendency to lean forward. By placing a scope or bar on his upper back, the quarterback is forced to keep his chest high and his weight over his center of gravity. The rhythm gather drill is designed to isolate the last two steps of a rhythm drop. The quarterback will take only the last two steps of his drop. In the rhythm gather, the quarterback's feet must be under him on his plant step so he can throw immediately. The other point of emphasis is to tuck the front shoulder so that the quarterback can gain forward momentum on the plant step. The purpose of the karate kid drill is to check for balance at the top of a quarterback's rhythm drop. When the quarterback reaches the end of his drop, he picks up the front foot like the karate kid. He should gradually fall forward or keep his balance. If he falls backwards, he has too much weight going in the wrong direction. The result of having his weight back will be that he will be late on throws. The hitch gather drill is designed to isolate the last two steps of the forward hitch in a big five drop. The point of emphasis is that the quarterback will take a big plant step and spring forward to gain optimum forward momentum. Another point to emphasize is that the quarterback should stay low or loaded in the forward hitch. This way, he doesn't have to reload to throw. The purpose of the windows drill is to teach quarterbacks to find open spaces between defenders and lead receivers into these open spaces with touch. The first point of emphasis is for the quarterback to attack the first window, then react. This puts him in a position to be ahead of the defenders. The second point to emphasize is that the quarterback will throw with the same timing. The only thing changing will be touch and location. 
The purpose of this drill is to teach quarterbacks to make small, precise pocket movements. As seen on the last clip in this drill, you can combine it with a reaction throw. The purpose of using the double ladder is to teach small, precise steps in the lateral pocket movement while maintaining a wide base. The purpose of all hurdle or bag drills for quarterbacks is to simulate movements that occur in the pocket and develop proprioception with objects at his feet. The point of emphasis is to keep a wide base and to make quick but deliberate movements. The quarterback should avoid each bag but stay as close as possible. The points of emphasis here are to step with the back foot first so that an extra step is not needed if a receiver comes open and to reset the feet to throw each time. The point of emphasis is to make a throw only when ground contact is made. This drill forces the quarterback to set his feet when he sees an open receiver. The purpose of combining the movements is to make quarterbacks more athletic by forcing him to move in and out of various awkward positions. Sledge drills. The powerful motivation tool we have in today's society is our competitive nature. Why are sports in general so popular? Because it's a civil way for people to compete against each other. Eliminate negative thoughts immediately. When negative thoughts pop up, just forget it and move on. When you catch yourself worrying about something, ask yourself, is this something I'm going to act on? If not, clear it out of your mind and move on. We waste a lot of time on things that aren't related to improving ourselves and reaching our goals. At the end of the day, you need to be able to say to yourself that reaching your goals came ahead of busy work or wasting time. Action Plan You have the power to decide every action in your life. Say to yourself that reaching... act on? If not, clear it out of your mind and move on. We waste a lot of time on things that aren't related to improving ourselves and reaching our goals. At the end of the day, you need to be able to say to yourself that reaching your goals came ahead of busy work or wasting time. Action Plan You have the power to decide everything.